Hey everyone, it's Inka. Remember how last time I made a couple dishes with one baguette? I feel like a lot of you really loved learning about the many things we could do with leftover bread. So this time I am experimenting with another one of my favorite foods, which is french fries. I also have a shirt that says french fries. Fries are a guilty pleasure, if you will. They're so, so good and so crispy when you enjoy them straight out of the fryer. But as we all know, usually, you know, a day after, or even if it's been sitting there for an hour or two, it kind of gets soggy and sad and you could reheat them right in a pan, you could reheat them in an air fryer. But I was just wondering, are there other ways to sort of repurpose them that would be even more enjoyable? So here are a couple of things that I came up with. Starting off with our first dish, a frittata which is basically a quiche without a crust. Now frittatas in general, I think are a great way of using up your leftovers or whatever you have sitting in the fridge and you can enjoy it for breakfast, lunch or dinner, whatever your heart desires. And today, since I'm making a rather large portion to share or to save for a later date, I am going to be using a lot of eggs. And then I'm just seasoning them with a bit of salt and for that sharp, nutty, cheesy taste, I am also adding in some grated Parmesan as well. And then because I had a bunch of vegetables in my fridge, I just fried them up really quickly. Some leeks, onions, and pepper. You do wanna make sure everything that you put in is cooked just to reduce the amount of moisture. And for more of those umami notes, I am also adding in some bacon bits because I especially like the smokiness they provide, that extra bit of bacon grease. And then what I'm doing here is just roughly chopping up my fries, not too finely because I kind of want there to be chunks of sorts, even though I know that's kind of hard to do with skinny fries, but the idea is there. And then I'm just gently mixing them in, making sure they're all covered. The next thing I'm adding is some full fat dairy because this is what's going to really give it that sort of creaminess. I'm going with ricotta here because I want there to be those like pockets of creaminess mixed into there, which is why I'm not mixing it completely. Just enough so that some of it is incorporated into the mixture and some are still in their chunky state. Then it's just a matter of pouring it right into my cast iron skillet. It is getting pretty full as you can see, so I was definitely a little nervous. When it's on the stove top though, this is when I'm adding in even more bacon bits just on the very top as well as some more grated cheese so that the flavor is like in every single bite. Once the egg around the edge of the pan is starting to form its shape, that's when I'm popping it into the oven to let it cook the rest of the way. Not too long though, I do kind of want to keep it to a more sort of custardy texture than a spongy texture, even though I do think I still ended up over baking it slightly, but it's still still came out looking very decent and I just wanted to jazz it up a little more by adding more ricotta on top. And for extra spiciness, I'm also adding on a couple tablespoonfuls of chili oil and some chives for color. What is so, so great about enjoying your fries this way is that you don't have to worry about the fries getting soggy anymore because texture it has is more similar to like if you added small chunks of potatoes into your frittata, making each bite kind of more substantial and adds to the texture, which I really enjoyed. But then because there was so much leftover, just thinking about how many eggs we put in, when I was looking for a quick lunch the next day, I was just wondering if I could maybe make it into a sandwich, kind of like, you know, those fluffy tamago sandos with like the big slice of egg sandwiched between two slices of bread. That was kind of my inspiration. And so I just spread some Kewpie mayo on a slice of bread and put this like very sturdy layer of frittata right on top. I'd also trimmed it down already so it kind of fits the slice of bread. And then I just added that last layer of bread on the very top. And so this is how the frittata sandwich is born. It looks like a giant of a sandwich and it is, but you can see in this cross section, those wonderful layers of ricotta, the leeks, the onions, the peppers, and of course the fries themselves. You can actually see like the, the chunks of fries in there. 
and I really, really enjoyed this in sandwich form. I feel like the mayo really added that extra sweetness, and then the bread made each bite feel a little less like you're just eating an endless amount of eggs. It kind of balanced it out a little better. Even though I will say I definitely had to split half with my brother because even just half is extremely filling. The next thing I'm making is some potato soup. And apparently french fry soup was a viral thing a while ago. I'm not too familiar with that version. It is a very interesting thought. But the potato soup I'm making today is a little more like cream of potato soup. I'm starting off by frying up some onions and olive oil to really get some of that fragrance. And then I'm adding in some cauliflower to help balance the fries out a little bit. Also because I personally really like cream of cauliflower soup, so I thought that would be a nice addition. Then the fries go right in. I chop them up into slightly smaller pieces this time since we'll be cooking these down in some chicken broth, which is what I'm adding here. Once it comes to a boil, I'm just continuing to let it simmer with the lid on basically until everything sort of cooked down and softened. This is when I could go in with my immersion blender and just start blending all of those vegetables together until I have this texture that's very much kind of already like cream of potato soup. But I did want it to be slightly smoother and so that's why I'm adding in some more heavy cream. You can even add a little bit of creme fraiche if you like and that's pretty much done. I like serving it up with a little dollop of cream and some leeks parsley on top. Honestly, you probably can't even tell that this is made from fries just by looking at it like this. Texture-wise, it's smooth, creamy. Flavor-wise, I feel like depending on how much cream you add, it can really sort of carry the soup through. Interestingly enough though, I will say this actually smelled greasier than it tasted. So I was kind of skeptical going in because I took like an initial whiff and I was like, oh, this smells a little greasy. But then when I took that first bite, it really just tasted like cream of potato soup. You couldn't really taste the greasiness there. So I thought that was an interesting thing to know. All right, so then we have what I like to call an okonomiyaki spin-off. The reason being that my creation borrows from the flavors of okonomiyaki, but when it comes to ingredients, my version of it is maybe more like it's distant and bizarre cousin, if you will. Anyways, here's what I did. I'm starting out with some all-purpose flour, a little bit of sweet potato starch for chewiness, some baking powder, salt, sugar, and a little bit of dashi powder. And then I'm adding an egg and water, just little by little. It's almost like making, you know, a regular pancake, right? And I'm just mixing it all together as I'm adding in more water, basically until it becomes the smooth batter with no lumps preferably. This is when I add in my cabbage that I've already cut into strips to match the size of my leftover french fries that I've kept intact this time. So the idea here is really kind of like making a potato pancake, right? And the batter in this case almost acts like a kind of glue to keep both the cabbage and the fries together. And then once everything is coated, I just let this mixture, batter, rest for a while, maybe around like half an hour or so in the fridge. And then I just fried it up afterwards by laying it out in the pan and adding a layer of thinly sliced pork on top and then flipping it once the bottom layer is cooked. I'm kind of just trying to help it retain its shape here, but I think it's already decided that it's going to stay irregular. Now that it's cooked through, I'm brushing on a layer of okonomiyaki sauce, which is kind of like Worcestershire sauce, except it's a lot sweeter and a little less savory, and it has this sort of like slightly thicker texture. On top of that, I'm adding on some kewpie mayo, just like they would with traditional okonomiyaki, and adding on quite a bit of bonito flakes because I really like them. And since I don't have seaweed powder at home, but I still wanted that pop of color, I'm just adding on some chives here. And there it is, my potato okonomiyaki situation. I kind of love this. The flavors are very similar to what you would expect from a regular okonomiyaki, most probably because the condiments that we're using are mostly the same. But in terms of texture, I feel like this one definitely had a denser structure, but at the same time also had that sort of fluffiness a hash brown has. So if you like 
the flavors of okonomiyaki and you like the texture of hash browns, I feel like this would be ideal for you to try out. The last thing I'm making is some shakshuka. Basically for this last dish, I wanted to try and make something a little bit on the saucier side, something where the potatoes could sit in, and that's how I landed on this. And what I did was just fry up some red pepper and onions, I let them cook for a little bit, before adding in my fries, which this time I've chopped up again into somewhat smaller pieces. Once everything is kind of browned a little bit, that's when I'm adding in my garlic and all of my seasonings, including paprika, a lot of cayenne pepper because I wanted it to be spicy, and then also a sprinkle of cumin. Once everything's combined and softened, I'm just adding in some whole peeled tomatoes straight from the can. And also, again, with the seasoning, just some sugar, salt, and pepper. And then I'm just letting it simmer and sit for a while, let everybody get well acquainted in the skillet. And then that's when I'm finally adding in my eggs on the very top. And also, to help quicken the process a little bit, I actually ended up putting the entire skillet into the oven, just long enough for the eggs to set. And then I just pulled it out and sprinkled on this generous amount of chopped parsley. And there it is. It's perfect to enjoy with a slice of toast. You can see that beautiful yolk pop right there, which is kind of where you want your eggs to be. And fun fact, I actually gave some of this to my brother who could not even tell that there were french fries in there. He honestly just thought I put in some sort of like potatoes, like just regular potatoes. So again, the greasy flavor did not come through. You can actually see the little bits of fries here. At this point, they've pretty much just become your average potato chunks. I do feel like they actually helped thicken the sauce slightly and add it again that bit of texture, which I tend to really appreciate in my dishes. So there it is, my 4.5 dishes created to help us use up our leftover fries so that next time if you're at a party or if you go out and eat and you can't finish your fries because your burger was too big, pack it up, take it home and give one of these a try. Put your own twist on it, just have fun with it. Can't wait to see what you can do and I will see you in the next video. Bye.